My name is Paul Lockett, I'm a research fellow in the Clinical and Translational Epidemiology Unit at Massachusetts General Hospital and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to talk about our study entitled Association Between Circulating Levels of C-Reactive Protein and Interleukin-6 and Risk of Inflammatory Bowel Disease. The concept of a preclinical disease phase characterized by a positive biomarker but in the absence of symptoms or other features required to establish diagnosis has been reasonably well described for conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and SLE. There's also some evidence that circulating levels of inflammatory markers may be elevated during the preclinical phase of rheumatoid arthritis. The existence of a similar preclinical disease phase in inflammatory bowel disease has attracted increasing attention over recent years, largely as a result of serologic marker studies, such as a study involving Israeli Defence Force recruits and a recent larger analysis from the EPIC cohort demonstrating that serologic markers such as anti-Saccharomyces cerevisiae and anti-flagellin antibody may be elevated up to six years before a diagnosis of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. We were therefore interested in determining whether, as in rheumatoid arthritis, circulating inflammatory marker levels might be associated with the risk of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. In order to answer this question, we exploited the resources of two nationwide prospective cohort studies of female nurses, the Nurses' Health Study and Nurses' Health Study 2. Participants in these cohorts have provided updated information on health and lifestyle factors by returning biennial questionnaires. Subgroups of participants in both cohorts also provided blood samples uh, over a time period between 1989 and 1999. All of the incident cases of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis included in the present analysis were confirmed by physician case record review uh, following a self-reported diagnosis of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Based on the availability of blood specimens taken prior to a diagnosis of IBD, we generated a nested case control study comprising 83 cases of Crohn's disease, 90 cases of ulcerative colitis, matched to 344 controls. And we use participants' frozen plasma specimens to determine their circulating levels of high-sensitivity C-reactive protein and interleukin-6 using commercially available assays. In logistic models, adjusting for factors previously reported to be associated with inflammatory bowel disease risk, such as body mass index, smoking status, and oral contraceptive use, we observed a statistically significant linear association between increasing levels of IL-6 or CRP and risk of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Indeed, compared to the lowest quintile of plasma IL-6, the highest quintile uh, was associated with an odds ratio for Crohn's disease of 4.7 and an odds ratio for ulcerative colitis of 3.4. Similarly, for CRP, the highest quintile was associated with an odds ratio for Crohn's disease of 2.8 and an odds ratio for ulcerative colitis of 1.8. It's important to bear in mind that the time interval between blood collection and diagnosis of either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease in our analysis was on average seven years. However, we were mindful of the fact that participants could have had symptoms of IBD without yet having received a diagnosis, and this could have influenced our results. We therefore excluded any participant who had received a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease within two years of blood collection and found that the estimates were really very similar to those of our main analysis. We also observed no evidence that the association between inflammatory marker levels and risk of IBD was modified by the time interval between blood collection and diagnosis. So in summary, our study suggests that subclinical levels of inflammation may be a feature of the preclinical disease phase of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. However, further research is required to elucidate the biologic mechanisms responsible uh, for these observations. It seems unlikely that CRP or IL-6 on their own would be specific enough to screen for or predict IBD in those at increased risk. However, it's conceivable that inflammatory marker levels may contribute to future risk prediction models that include genetic, serologic or other biomarkers. I'd like to thank you for taking time to watch our video and would encourage you to read our full article in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology.